Having seen the evaluation of a patient of hypertension, now we shall finally get to the real practical matter, which is management of a patient with hypertension. We shall be looking at management under the following headings. We've already discussed screening. Screen anybody more than 40 years of age. If they have hypertension, follow them up, uh, depending upon what we are going to discuss subsequently. If no hypertension, every yearly they need to be screened. If a patient with high family risk comes to you, it is worthwhile to screen even before the age of 40. Now, how do you decide on therapy? So please look at this table very carefully. If you look at the right side of the screen, you will see that you have stage two hypertension. On the left side of the screen, you have stage one hypertension, right? As you have seen the definitions earlier, we have defined stage one as having a systolic BP between 130 to 140 and a diastolic BP between 80 to 90. And stage two hypertension is systolic more than 140 or a diastolic blood pressure of more than 90. In stage two hypertension, if you look at the right side of the screen, you will see that it is quite simple. Stage two hypertension requires drug therapy that is bp lowering medications along with non-pharmacological therapy that is lifestyle and diet modifications which we will discuss in detail if you look at the left side in a patient who is diagnosed as so look back to the right side of the screen stage 2 hypertension you will start them on both non-pharmacological therapy and BP lowering medication. In stage one hypertension, that is on the left side, you do not directly start treatment. This is where you estimate the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk. That is a 10 year cardiovascular disease, disease risk using the calculator that we discussed earlier. Now, if the ASCVD risk is greater than 10%, yes you treat it like stage 2 hypertension that is you start medicines along with lifestyle and diet modifications if the ASCVD risk is less than 10 percent you only start diet and lifestyle modifications in a patient who is only who has at low risk even though stage 1 hypertension reassess the patient every three to six months if the patient is on therapy that is ASCVD risk greater than 10% in stage 1 hypertension or any stage 2 hypertension. That is people who you start on drug therapy reassess every month. Okay. Till the blood pressure goal is met. And once it is met, you can go back to 3 to 6 monthly screening. Right. Now. Okay. So what do we need to understand here is all patients of hypertension are not immediately started on therapy. Remember, we do have to record at least on three occasions, one week apart at least, to say that the patient is hypertensive. Once you say the patient is hypertensive, you divide them into stage one or stage two. Stage two, of course, start treatment. Stage one, assess the risk using ASCVD. If it is more than 10%, start the patient on drug therapy. If not, the patient will receive only diet and lifestyle modifications, right? Now, let's go a little bit more in detail as to what are the non-pharmacological and pharmacological therapies. Let's start by discussing the non-pharmacological therapies, okay? So if you look at the non-pharmacological therapy here, I'm bringing it up onto your screen, you can see that weight loss is one of the best and most important things in hypertension management. It helps to reduce the blood pressure by about five millimeters of mercury once you attain the ideal body weight. Diet, we use what is called dietary approaches to stopping hypertension or a DASH diet. This is one of the best researched diets to reduce hypertension. We'll look at it in a little more detail. Sodium intake should be reduced to less than 1.5 gram per day. This is, you can add salt in during cooking, but do not add salt while you are at the table. Do not add table salt while sitting and eating.
okay also avoid highly salty things like perhaps dried fish or pickles okay those are, <clears throat> sorry those are the things that contain very high salt content in an indian diet enhance intake of potassium right dietary potassium especially rich in many fruits are very useful when your potassium intake is enhanced that also seems to be good at reducing your uh, blood pressure physical activity ha that has been proven to reduce blood pressure is about 30 minutes of brisk walking that is aerobic activity five days a week total of 150 minutes in a week okay beyond that we have not found it reducing the blood pressure, but this is a minimum requirement. So, of course, if your patient is exercising more, no harm, but this is the bare minimum that is required. And this is the effective amount. You don't need to ask an elderly patient to start running. This is something that you should understand. Okay, An elderly patient, you don't need to say you need to start running to lose weight. The amount of benefit that the patient gets by brisk walking 150 minutes in a week is the same as that of a runner okay the runner might get additional benefits of having better muscle mass having better lean body mass insulin sensitivity but as far as blood pressure control cardiovascular mortality is concerned 150 minutes of brisk walking seems to do the trick okay lastly alcohol consumption even though alcohol is not to be strictly avoided it has to be reduced to less than two drinks per day in men and less than one drink per day in women how much a standard drink is we will discuss when we are going to discuss other uh, elements like cld at a later date one quick look at the dash diet dietary approaches to stopping hypertension right if you look at it carefully you will see that it is low on sodium high on potassium and calcium whole grains food uh, fruits vegetables and low fat dairy products avoid processed food basically it means fish poultry and pulses are in moderate amounts provide the protein nuts and seeds can also be added very small amounts of red meat and processed carbohydrates that sweets okay this is what you need to know about the dash diet i i shall be uh, giving a link in the show notes so please have a look at the notes you will have a little greater appreciation of a dash diet as well right i'll not go into that now i'll leave it there okay so with this we can go on to discuss the last aspect okay so we discussed the management of hypertension in terms of screening okay when to start therapy what is the non-pharmacological therapy and at this point i would want to look at what are the pharmacological therapies that we have okay to start off the initial therapy is going to be any of these four groups, hyazides, calcium channel blockers, ACE inhibitors, or ARBs. You can choose any of them, right? Hyazides, calcium channel blockers, ACE inhibitors, or ARBs are all equally good first choices. These antihypertensives are strong antihypertensives, which will give you blood pressure reduction of 10 to 20 millimeters of mercury systolic. That is why we start with this. Beta blockers used to be classified as first line antihypertensives. Beta blockers, just like ACE inhibitors, ARBs, also have anti remodeling properties for the heart. Unfortunately, beta blockers do not reduce the blood pressure as potently as the other drugs, which is why, as a first line, we prefer thiazides, calcium channel blockers, or ACE inhibitors, ARBs. Beta blockers are also not suitable for elderly individuals because it can produce issues with heart rate and also cause bronchospasm worsening conditions like asthma. Thiazide diuretics are very safe, okay, except for the urge to re repeatedly pass urine. Thiazide diuretics are great first choice antihypertensives. Give them in the morning, maximum in the noon, never in the evening because you don't want a patient waking up at night to pass urine repeatedly. So thiazide diuretics something like hydrochlorothiazide or chlorthalidone are excellent first choices okay hydrochlorothiazide you can start at 12.5 chlorothalidone uh, uh, chlorothalidone sorry at 6.25 milligrams per day and you can gradually build it up calcium channel blockers that are that are, are, are being used for a long period of time and you know that they are really safe amlodipine 
you have a lot of newer uh, calcium channel blockers, silnidipin, benidipin with very of the few, very few side effects as compared to the older ones like amlodipin. Amlodipin, of course, produces some pedal edema, rarely can uh, produce bradycardia and heart block. But in elderly patients, by and large, uh, calcium channel blockers are extremely safe drugs. ACE inhibitors and ARBs are preferred in patients with associated kidney disease or diabetes. Only problem, once the creatinine is more than 2, you need to monitor the potassium because you know that ACE inhibitors and ARBs increase the potassium levels. Otherwise, in diabetics, ACE inhibitors and ARBs would be a good choice. In an elderly patient, calcium channel blocker would be a good choice. Okay. So depending upon your patient, you can always choose which is the first drug that you want to give. Now, do you want to start with one drug or two drugs? Ideally, if there is a person who's having stage one hypertension, of course, with an ASCVD risk greater than 10, you would want to start the patient on one drug. In patients who have on stage two hypertension, okay, stage two hypertension, or if the average blood pressure is more than 20 systolic or more than 10 diastolic above the target. I'll discuss these targets. So you can just remember like this. If the patient is having stage 2 hypertension, then you would prefer to start off with two drugs. Okay. You can, of course, if you have a problem with side effects, go slowly, start with one drug, gradually add the second and see. Okay. But usually, Rule of thumb, stage one, high risk, that is more than 10 years, 10% uh, ASCVD risk, give one drug. Stage two hypertension, start a combination of two different drugs. That's don't add, don't give hydrochlorothiazide and chlorothalidone, which are in the same group. Give something with two different mechanisms. For example, hydrochlorothiazide with amlodipin, hydrochlorothiazide with telmisartan, hydrochlorothiazide with losartan. Okay, that sort of combinations are available and that is what you would pick in stage two hypertension. Now, what are the targets? Okay, a very simple uh, way to remember is that the target in most conditions is to bring the blood pressure less than 130 by 80. I'm sorry that here the blood pressure targets is shown as on the right side is shown as greater than 130 by 80. That is a typo. The goal of bringing down your blood pressure to is to keep it less than 130 by 80. I will have a corrected version of this table in the show notes. Now, if you look at the left side, you will see that in patients who have already have cardiovascular disease, okay, that is a patient who had had a heart attack or a stroke, you start treatment, that is a BP threshold to start treatment, that is your second column, should be once the blood pressure is greater than 130 by 80 in any patient who has had a, a, a heart disease or a stroke. So if a patient has already had a stroke or an ischemic heart disease, you start treatment once the blood pressure is more than 130 by 80 and your aim is to keep it less than 130 by 80. If the patient has not had, okay, this the same applies to anybody who is having an ASCVD risk of more than 10%. Again, importance of ASCVD. So anybody who's already had a heart disease or a stroke or a patient who has a more than 10% risk in the next one decade, you start them as soon on treatment as soon as it is more than 130 by 80, that is in stage one hypertension itself, and keep it less than 130 by 80. If the patient is going to come to you with ASCVD risk of less than 10%, okay, or known previous known heart disease, then this patient, you can start treatment once it goes above 140 by 90, okay, that is once it moves into stage two. And the target you want to bring it down to is less than 130 by 80. Of course, in patients who have had other important conditions, okay, like it's like you can see here, other important conditions like diabetes mellitus, chronic kidney disease, heart failure, um, or uh, uh, peripheral vascular disease. These are the patients who you will again start on you want uh, on treatment once it is more than 180 by 130 by 80, and you would want to keep the blood pressure less than 130 by 80 in these individuals. 